Okay, now for question number 14 from the specimen paper for 2020 IGCSE um, Cambridge exam. Um, number 14, without using your calculator in bold type, work out 1 and 7 twelfths plus 13 over 20. Now this is a area where many students suffer from a modern disease called calculatoritis where when they don't have their calculator next to them or they are uh, told not to use a calculator they start shaking okay so this is something where it's you know needs to be cured by you you know having certain skills which you should know and one of those skills is how to add together fractions because in the IGCSE exam they want to see the steps that you took that show you did not use your calculator to find the answer. If you check your answer with your calculator to make sure that you've done it correctly, that's perfectly fine. But they need to see those steps that you took in order to solve this question without using a calculator. So when you're adding fractions together, you have to show that you make the denominators the same. But before doing that, if you have a mixed number, I prefer myself, there's different ways of doing it, but I personally prefer to change that into an improper fraction first and then proceed. So 12, 1 and 7 over 12 is equivalent to 12 over 12 plus 7 over 12. You can think of it like that, or you can think of it at like multiply 12 by 1 and add 7. That's kind of like the power way of remembering. So 12 times 1 is 12 plus 7 is 19, 19 over 12. Basically because 1 is equivalent to 12 over 12, and you have one, you have one, 12 over 12 plus 7 over 12, which is 19 over 12, and you have plus 13 over 20. Now, we cannot add these fractions together unless we compare them with the same denominators. So we have to make them as equivalent denominators. Now, on some students, what they will do, they will just multiply 12 by 20 to find a number that they both go into so we can express the numerators as the same. Now, that's going to be a lot of hassle, especially when you're not using your calculator. Um, so it's much easier for you to think about what number that does 12 go into and 20 also go into and the best way of doing that is to basically look at the larger one of the numbers and go through its times table so 20 times 20 is 20 times 1 is 20 12 does not fit exactly into 20 20 times 2 is 40 12 does not go exactly into 40 20 times 3 is 60 12 goes into 60 an exact number of time so we have to bake them over 60 and we know that 12 goes into 60, or you should know it goes into 5 times. So knowing your time table is important. So you've got to do 19 times 5, okay, which is like 10 times 5 plus 9 times 5, which is 50 plus 45, which is going to be 95. Um, yep, yeah, 95. If you're not sure, you can do 19 times 5 here. 5 lines are 45. 5 ones are 5 plus 4 is 9, 95. And then you've got 20 times something gives you 60, 20 times 3 gives you 60, and 13 times 3 is going to give you 30 plus 3, which is 39. And now we can add these two together. So you have 95 plus 39. That gives you 14 here. And that gives you 9 plus 3, which is 12 plus 1 is um, 13. Okay, so just make sure of that. That's a 14 plus 13. Um, yep, that's right. So 134 divided by 60. Now, in its simplest form, um, you have to, you know, get rid of the common, any common factor. And you can see two is definitely a common factor. It might not be the highest one. We can just start with two. 134 divided by two. So two into 134. Two goes into 13 uh, six times. Remainder one. Two into 14 goes seven times. That gives you 67 divided by 30. So here it doesn't say write your answer. Ah, it does. It says write your answer as a mixed number. Okay. Because it states that it says write your answer as a mixed number, you have to change it from an improper fraction into a mixed number. So you can think of this as this is like 30 over 30 plus something else over 30. What's left over? Okay. In fact, you've got 230. So it's 60 over 30. Okay. So you, well, the easiest way basically to say 30 goes into 67 two times remainder 7. So 7, 2 and 7 over 30 is the answer. So you've got two sets of 30, which is 60 over 30, and what's left over? 7 over 30. So 2 and 7 over 30 is the answer to question number 14. Okay, they gave us kind of biggish numbers to deal with, but it's perfectly fine. And always to make sure, in case you made a silly mistake, which is quite possible, okay, always go to the original question. Oops. Go to the original question 
that you were given okay which is here and don't go to what you wrote down in case you wrote it down incorrectly and put this in your calculator so you're going to put 1 and 7 over 20 oh sorry 12 be careful 7 over 12 uh, plus 13 over 20 13 over 20 and you can check to see the answer comes out as the correct 67 over 30 and if you want to know what that is as an improper fraction you press shift as a mixed number so you press shift and that std button and it will change it into 2 and 7 over 30 you can just make sure that you've done it correctly so using the calculator is fine for checking your answer but if you just wrote down the answer in this question as uh, you know, 2 and 7 over 30 you wouldn't get any marks okay because you have it says without using your calculator so they want to see this is basically the main important step here where you make the denominators the same that shows them you know exactly what you're doing in changing this question in, in adding two fractions together that's the main step here basically all right so that's that's the method that's like where the method um, where you'll get your marks from but just make sure you don't make any silly mistakes and check in your calculator if you have um, messed up with something then go through your steps and correct that so there's answer to question number 14 and question 15 to find it you go to the playlist on the description of this video and you click the playlist and you'll find all the questions from this paper once they're all compiled over there okay thank you for watching